My name is Miguel Baker and I am here at InterNoscon uh, for one, to surprise all my Italian friends who did not expect me to be here, uh, for two, to play nano games, these very small games that are brand new in the US and I have brought some of them here to show, and for three, to play more games with my Italian friends um, because I so very much enjoy it. Nano game is a, a game that is very small in size that can fit on a postcard or maybe a, a large business card, something that takes a very little space, um, like 500, 600 words, and fits in a small amount of time, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, that sort of thing, maybe, maybe an hour, short games so that you can play a little story anywhere. I write games, I design games, and so bringing nano games here that I've designed and that uh, my husband Vincent Baker has designed and our friend uh, Epidia Ravishaw has designed uh, is interesting to me. Watching the Italian scene, role-playing scene develop, especially with the game chef and other games that Italian designers are now creating, it's very inspiring. And all, all game design uh, feeds on each other, inspires each other. So the nano games that I'm bringing now, there's a back and forth, a give and take. Um, these little games that I write, that I design, that friends of mine design, you know, we want to show them to our Italian friends because they will do something new and interesting based on them. And then we will do something new, and then they will do something new, and that's how this continues, which we love. Last year I was a guest of the convention. Uh, I came here, I had two games that were released last year, Thousand and One Nights and Siren, are longer games of mine that were released last, last year. Uh, Claudia Michele, the narrativa, asked me to come as a guest of the convention. And I loved it so much that when I had an opportunity to come back, um, I did. And I planned it in secret with two friends of mine, and nobody else knew I was coming. It's been great fun. Well, there's a huge, huge number of people in the United States playing role-playing games. Uh, storytelling is something everybody does from the time we are little children. Some of us forget for a while that we can tell stories. Some of us eventually remember our media for telling stories, whether that's film or writing or painting or creating storytelling games. And so for those of us who have continued this from our childhood or come back to this form of connective, creative, imaginative uh, interaction, you know, it's a very rich place and it's a very a fairly large scene in America with a great, great variety of games being played, from ones that are very, very traditional, in whatever that means, <laughs> to ones like you know the games that are being played here, which are very different. You know, if, if you look at each table, different things are happening. Different stories are being told. Different mechanics are being used to tell those stories. It's very interesting, very wide array of games. And that's true in the US, too. I worked last for a, most of this past winter uh, with The Girl Effect, uh, which is a um, part the, of the Nike Foundation. I hope I won't get in trouble for saying that. You might want to edit that bit out. <laughs> with The Girl Effect, which is uh, an organization in Africa to promote social change for teenage girls. And we were there specifically to create games, role-playing games, running games, tag games, card games, uh, to create a setting for girls ages 10 to 16, 19 years old where they could have a relaxed interaction and form connections, learn like, to create friendships, but that every single one of these games had at the core some sort of skill that we wish to strengthen in these girls. A sense of resilience, a sense of long-term planning, a sense of relying on each other, trusting each other, uh, that they could make something bigger together. You know, all of these things were threaded throughout all of the games that we designed. And watching the girls play them was unbelievably rewarding. Seeing, seeing girls change, seeing a little 10-year-old girl who came in being uh, in a group of 12 girls being sort of the quiet one and not really forthcoming 
and then over the course of the day playing games with her and really looking for her voice you know what do you what do you think could make this a better game how could we make this good good for all girls all over Ethiopia what do you like about it what do you not like about it and watch her in the course of you know eight hours step forward a little bit into feeling more confident uh, more willing to voice her opinion um, and able to do whatever game and then the best thing the very best thing was to watch these teenage girls begin to ask questions that we were asking as game designers to say why does this work this way what would happen if we did this different thing with this game you know could I could I play this a different way and that sort of uh, creative forward thinking you know just it, it still makes my skin tingle you know it's so <laughs> exciting well there's a difference between storytelling that is being done for propaganda that has a particular motive and storytelling where what I'm interested in is your experience and if what I'm interested in is what what your experience is what I'm interested in is your creative uh, uh, effort um, I don't have a propaganda position behind that um, since the existence of people we have used whatever you know we've seen politicians and what you know we've used all kinds of tools to further their own ends so I'm certainly confident in saying that yes there are people out there thinking about how can I write a uh, not maybe not like this but how can I spin the story you know how can I make this say what I want it to say um, of course are there people writing games for that I don't think so. I hope not. <laughs> Can you say something uh, cute about uh, Internos Gone? Oh, yes, I love them. They're so sweet. Oh my gosh. Look, look, look at that. How can you not love that? It is the, it's, it's like being in a fairy tale. You know, and one of the games that I'm working on right now is set in fairyland. So there's a whole, there's a whole other, you know, Being able to surprise all of my friends here one by one as they come in the room and go, oh, you know, best. But also, there's ways in which this is very, very, very concretely uh, game research for me to come and walk around Bertinaro and to look out at the fields and to imagine, you know, aspects of how does this, how does this mesh with my concept of fairyland that I'm creating for this game that I'm working on. Because what better place would there be? <laughs> so, okay. that feels very sweet to me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. It was a delight.